In this video, we're going to go through and actually try to replicate this system so that other clients can see what is actually going on. So when you aim through this site, other clients can see that. When you switch like this, other clients will be able to see that. So that's how we're going to set it up, and it can be quite simple. And same thing goes for we're going to replicate the aiming portion. So what I want to do is I want to have B is aiming and optic index be replicated via onrep. So when they change by the server, and same thing, you're going to be changing these on the local client as well, we want them to essentially just call the functions on our animation blueprint because that's really all it needs. So that way, everything still, including the replication, is going to be event fired. You don't have anything checking constantly on tick or anything like that, which would be a waste of resources. So to begin, uh, let's actually open up our first person blueprint set the arms to not be only seen by the owner, so that way other clients can see it as well. Do two clients, and let's do it as a listen server. So, now we have everyone, we can see each other, and we want to replicate the aiming. So, to do that, let's start with replicating aiming first. So, let's see, where is it? Here's our B is aiming. Set this to be a U property. It's going to be replicated using. And we want to create a function for it. So U function void on rep is aiming. And this is going to be our on rep. So set that up. Create the on rep. And all we want to do is pretty much this. Well, I actually want to check and make sure it's valid first in case of a crash. So when other clients receive this, this will fire. So we also need to actually set this variable to replicate. So we need to override get lifetime replicated props. So get, yeah, get lifetime replicated props. So virtual void, get lifetime replicated props, takes in a T array by reference of F lifetime properties. Make sure to call super and do rep lifetime. I'm going to do the class, which is A, ADS tutorial character, and then the variable, which is B, is aiming. So we want to, it wants us to include Unreal Network. So let's include net Unreal Network.h, and that'll fix that issue up. And we want to do one more thing, is we don't, we don't need this to be replicated to the owning client because they are already setting it for themselves. So what we're gonna do is do rep lifetime underscore condition. And for the third parameter, we set the condition, which is condition underscore skip owner. So it's gonna skip ourselves for the replication. So the only thing we need to do now is, well, actually we can test this strictly by the server. So let's restart the editor and make sure it works. Okay, once all that is open, Let's go ahead and see what happens. So, clients down here on the right, or the, sorry, the server's down here on the bottom right. So when I aim, as you can see, it, it brings it up like so. So the animation itself is being replicated, and that's what we wanted. But now we just got to do it from the client. So we need to make a server RPC to make it run and replicate onto the server. So we're going to do a U function server, reliable, with validation, void, server, underscore, set, aiming. And we're just going to take in a boolean, so is aiming. And you also will have to create the validate and implementation functions. Now, someone had commented before with Visual Studio and said it would not let them compile for some odd reason without defining these, or declaring these inside of the header as well. So you might have to do that. But once that's done, in the validate, we just return true. That was organize these. And in the implementation, all we have to do is pretty much trigger set as aiming. So that's going to go through and fire. Well, actually, we can just do a simple callback. So set aiming, and pass in is aiming. 
like so. So when we aim on the client, we go through, we want to do a check. So if we do not have authority, we go through and we call server underscore set aiming and pass in is aiming. Then we make our way to the server. We go back and call set aiming again, which is going to set B is aiming. And remember B is aiming is replicated, which will then trigger the on rep to fire for all the other clients. So we're not going to bother calling the on rep on the server because we're making the call back and doing it right here. So that should take care of the replication for us that way. So let's go ahead and relaunch and see what happens. All right. I uh, don't need to open the other assets. Let's see. So I aim on the client, and it is now visible on the server, and vice versa. So out of curiosity, let's try with three clients. We should be able to see it client to client, as that guy just fell through the world. So let's bump this up. There we go. So client to client. And that is now replicated just fine. So we know we are good to go there, and we can follow the exact same logic to alter our sites. So let's see. What we're going to do is replicate wherever it went. We're going to replicate optic index. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with B is aiming. So we're going to make it a U property. It's going to be replicated uh, using an on rep. So let's change it. So it's going to be on rep optic index we're going to have u function void on rep underscore optic index so that way when optic index replicates it fires back down to on rep optic index let's create the implementation and of course it puts it above the constructor because that makes complete sense it's right here and let's create the server RPC. So U function server reliable with validation. And we're going to just pass in our optic index. So void server underscore optic index. And we're taking the uint date op, or uh, new index. Create the implementation. Same thing applies as before with defining these in the header for Visual Studio if you have that issue. So for the validate, we just return true. And then for the implementation, what we can go through is pretty much perform this logic. Well, with the exception of some things. So we're going to set, copy this portion, paste it in the on rep. So what we do is current optic equals optics and we get the index. So because we're replicating that, remember? And then we go through, and on the server, all we have to do is just simply, well, replicate optic index. So optic index equals new index, and then because we are not running the code on the server, we want to make sure we call on rep underscore optic index. So that way the server fires this as well. So when we cycle optics, we want to do the same check. So if we do not have authority, we will go through and call server underscore optic index and pass in optic index. Now you could do a kind of a check for efficiency here where if optic index did in fact change, we call server optic index. If it did not, we don't want to call it at all because we don't have anything to replicate or change. So it could prevent a server RPC. So that's something to think about if you implement this yourself. So now we have we make our way to the server, assuming we're the client. The server then sets optic index to equal the new index. And because optic index is set to replicate, well, it will be here in a second. It will fire the onrep function for all other clients. And then we call the onrep itself for the server. So that way the server also runs this code. Otherwise the server wouldn't. Let's go to our get lifetime replicated props. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Make sure we skip owner. And for the variable, we do optic index. That'll take care of that. And the very last thing that we do is we want to also replicate optics. Well, actually, we don't technically need to because each client should be spawning these themselves. So that should actually be safe, I think. No, because it's, well, 
Actually, let's just find out. So we're going to close that down and relaunch. I did call the server RPC, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay. Two clients, and let's see what happens. Aim, and there we go. As you can see, I am switching through each optic. Now we can fix the issue with our uh, right elbow by going to our animation blueprint, finding our two bone IK, and you see this little guy right here. We're going to move that out and back. So it should, it might give him a little bit of a chicken wing, but it should bring the right elbow back and out. Move that in better place, and let's look at it. So we aim. And now we have an issue with the elbow going straight back. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not going to be too big of an issue, but for first-person animations, it might be. So basically, if with whatever animations you end up using, you would want to set this position to some place that, well, obviously you're going to have to fine-tune it, but some place that works for you and your animation specifically. And same thing goes for if you're using a different skeleton. That takes care of the replication for the aim down sights. Let me just confirm that it works on the server side as well, which it should. So we aim, and yes, it does. So that is good to go. That's going to be the end of this video. And in the next one, we are going to try to implement the third person mesh. Well, actually, we might do the left hand IK instead to get that set up first, so then we can create our own third person blueprint and set that up that way. So, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.